So in the last video I showed you how to set up regular local notifications on an iOS device. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up action notifications. So in order to set up that action notifications there's a whole train of things that we need to do. And they start with setting up the individual actions, setting up sort of the container for these actions called category, and then finally setting our category into our notification setting so that we can call a notification of that particular category. So we're going to get started back here in the app delegate. Right in the did launch of options near our register user notification settings. The first thing I'm going to do is create two actions because there's two types of actions. There's a background action and there's a foreground action. They're pretty self-explanatory. Background action triggers your app to start up in the background, does a thing, shuts your app back down again. A foreground action opens your app up on the screen and does whatever the user want, whatever you want at the button that the user just pressed to do. So let's create our actions up here in the delegate. Uh, let's call this action one. First thing we need to do is create a variable for action one. And it's of the type UI mutable user notification action. We have some brackets. What is this error? Okay. Now we need to set the properties. So there's some base properties. There's first there's identifier. This is the identifier that we use to identify the action when the user presses the button and it launches our app. So we know what action the user did. So I'm just going to call this action one. You should also, yep. Next, we have title, which is what comes up in the button. First action. Now, the next three actions actually physically affect what the notification and the action does. So, so the first one is activation mode. This is where you set whether you want this to be a background action or a foreground action. So it's UI, user, noti uh, user notification activation mode dot. And then you either want it to be background or foreground. Like I said, I want action one to be a background action. So I'm just going to pick background. Click enter. Action one again. The next option we have is destructive. This is a Boolean, either true or false, and it affects what happens to the notification, whether it be in Notification Center, on the lock screen, or that little drop down from the top of the screen. What happens to it when the user presses this button? Will, if it's true, the notification will disappear from, say, Notification Center, or from it will close from the top of the screen. And if it's false, the notification will stay there, and the user can either press this button again or can press one of the other buttons or they can choose to close it. Because this is a background action, I thought it would be a good example of a false. So the user can press the button multiple times. And the final property that you probably want to know about is authentication required. This is another boolean. It allows you to control whether or not your user can perform this action when their phone is locked. So if their phone is locked, when they press this action button, the um, keypad will come up, they have to type in their password, it disappears again, the action's performed. So for this example, let's just say true, it doesn't really matter. These are the ones that just need to be set. I'm going to create another action. Action 2. And it's going to be the same, except it's going to be a foreground action. It's going to open up our app. So as you can see, my second action is exactly the same, except, of course, the identifier, the name, and the activation mode. This time it's in the foreground, so it's going to open up our app. Now that we have our actions, we need to put them in the next layer, a category. This is, the, this is used to define what type of actions are going to appear on a particular notification when you're setting that notification. So, as you can probably imagine, I'm going to create another variable. This time, it's going to be a 
it's going to be called category one. Of course, you can have many types of categories. You can reuse actions between categories. And the type is UI mutable user notification category. Again, we need to set up some properties. So category one. The first property is again an identifier. This time we're identifying the category. We're going to use continue our capitalization scheme. So and category one. Now we have two other actions we need to set. So now we have to set the actions into this category. So category set actions. So as you can see, this is a directory. It's a directory that we're setting this in. And we're going to, for this first one, I'm just going to set one action. And I'll explain in a minute. Now, when we tab, we have this UI action uh, notification access, UI user notification action context. We click enter and we go to the end, put a dot. As you can see, we have two options there. We have default and we have minimal. This is because iOS lets you set what are the minimum actions that you have to have displayed for your notification. It also lets you set a default, the actions that you'd like to have displayed on your notification, but they don't have to be displayed if there's not room. Because remember there's, what, four different size iPhones now. And there's an iPad, so you have to handle many different screen sizes. So this one I only have one action, so I'm just going to choose the minimum. Category 1, we're going to repeat this process and we're going to set the category as default. These are the actions that we would like to have. So we have one final thing we need to set up. It's our set, an NS set of all the categories that our app uses. So set. So just to do this, we're going to go fair. Uh, this actually can be a constant, save some space, equals ns set, open, oh, open a bracket, we want objects, of course you put all your actions, in, all your categories in here, we only have one, so get rid of these three dots, and close it. So now we have our actions, we have those actions in a category, and we have our categories in a set. The final thing we need to do, is set our category set into our notification settings. So down here in categories, we can put our own original name. Now we're ready to set our notification with our category identifier and set our notification with our category identifier. So back in our view controller, in our notification settings here, we're going to find one more um, property dot category. Our category name goes in here. There you go. Run our app. As you can see it thinks there isn't enough room to display both for some reason. Um, but we'll fix that for our continuation part, the third video in this series showing you how to handle when these buttons are pressed.